In the previous lecture, I gave you a very quick introduction of nodes inside node red and I learned about attributes and a few other things. But on their own, nodes are not very useful. They can't do anything in order for them to be useful. They need to be connected and configured inside flows. So in this lecture, I'm going to show you a few simple examples of nodes configured into flows to help us get started before we go into looking at individual nodes and how those are connected and are useful in our project and in the context of our project. To do that, I want to make use of the uh, DHT22 node that I installed in the previous lecture. And therefore, I'm going to connect a DHT22 sensor to my Raspberry Pi. So first, I will need to turn off my Raspberry Pi install the sensor which is just on a, a little uh, header which is set up on a little pcb that i've made and then come back to node red to make use of the sensor so here's my node red raspberry pi i'm just going to shut down and hold right now so i want to gracefully turn off the raspberry pi i'm going to go remove power and set up the sensor. So my Raspberry Pi is now turned off. I can see there's no activity on the green LED. I'm going to unplug network and power. And I'm going to take my DHC22 sensor and just plug it into the header of my Raspberry Pi. And that's all there is to it. I'm going to reconnect the network and power and give my Raspberry Pi a couple of minutes to begin. All right, see if node red is started again. Uh, not yet, so it's trying to reconnect. Let's try to refresh the page. It will tell me if the Raspberry Pi is ready. And we're back. Okay, so let's have a quick look at some examples. Uh, I'd like to begin with the inject and debug nodes. Those two together are probably the two simplest nodes. So I'm going to connect them simply by wiring them together like this. Now if I double click on the inject node, you'll see that the inject node allows me to inject a couple of, uh, a number of different things to whatever node follows it or whatever node it is connected to. For now, I'm just going to uh, type in a string called hello with the, with the word hello in it and click on done. So the idea here is that when I click on this button, the word hello, which is in the message that will be stored inside MSG payload uh, variable will be sent over to the next node. I'm going to talk more about MSG dot and basically other types of variable in a dedicated lecture later on in this uh, section. So that's all there is for this. Now let's go into the payload. I'm going to give it a name. I'm just going to say example debug node. And you can see that here the output of this node is whatever is inside MSG dot payload, which is where hello is stored, msg.payload, right? Okay. So for this very simple flow to take effect, we need to deploy it. So click on deploy, successfully deployed, and click on the debug button. So we can see the messages. You can see that we'll be showing or we'll be seeing messages from all nodes. Uh, you can be more selective if you want. You can see right now, I clicked on selected nodes and only the, the single available uh, debug node is showing and is of course selected. Or you can go for current flow if you have multiple flows. We only have one right now. So to trigger this flow, I just click on the button here, the eject node, and you can see that I do get notification that the trigger was successful. And here is the debug message can change it to something else. Let's say I can change this to a timestamp. 
I made a change to my flow, so I need to redeploy it. Click on Deploy button, then click on the Trigger button for the Inject node. And this number is actually time, right? You can click on it and you can see how the time format changes. All right. Let's go back to the original S number. All right. Now, uh, let's have a look at another uh, flow. I'm going to click on this button here to add a new flow, right? So this is going to be flow two. And of course, you can give them names. You can just double click and say, this is going to be my THD22 example. All right. The way I'm going to do this, is I'm going to start with the THD22. So I'm going to set that up first. Right there. Double click on it and I'm going to give it a name, DHT22. Uh, I can select the type of sensor that it is. Uh, I'm going to make reference to its data pin using the BCM GPIO notation. And I know that my sensor is connected to GPIO 17. All right, so that's it. Now, on its own, it can't do anything. I actually have to trigger it. So I have to basically start it manually. So there's a couple of ways to do that, but probably the easiest way is to use a combination between a inject flow or a uh, node, I should say, which you saw in the first example, and then connect it to my DHT22 sensor. And of course, I don't want to send a timestamp to my the H22 sensor. I just want to send it a very simple payload, which could be just a number. Like I'm just going to send it something to trigger the DHT22 to take a reading. And that's all there is. That's all you need to do here. So I'm going to click on OK to get uh, rid of that window. And the last thing that I want to do is to output the reading from the sensor to the debug window. So you know how to do that, right? Just use a debug node, connect it through, and give it a name. Show temperature reading. And that's going to come from the payload. Let's have a look inside here, just in case. No, I think it's all good here. Uh, if you want to learn more about how to use this particular node, remember there is documentation. Actually, not here, but uh, here. <laughs> There's a documentation for it. You can see that the DHE22 node will store the values from the sensor in the msg.payload variable that contains the reading. All right, so deploy this flow. Uh, let's go into the debug window and then trigger the flow. And there you go. There is the the reading 19.90 degrees Celsius. Now, another thing that I'd like to do here is that instead of me having to click on the button to trigger it, I'd like the flow itself to trigger the HE22 reading every, say, 10 seconds. So let's see. Uh, there's another useful function here, or node, I should say, called trigger, which is right here. Have a look at the documentation for trigger and it says that when triggered it can do something like send the message right but what is interesting about it is that you can set a period for the trigger so that it can trigger uh whatever follows every few seconds or minutes or even hours so have a look at these properties and you see uh get more information about this so the first part is about setting what happens when you activate the trigger for the first time and here we can just set it to center number one, right? But then what's interesting for this particular uh, application is that is that you can resend the same message every few seconds or milliseconds or minutes or hours. So what I'll do first, I will delete this wire, then rewire it via the trigger node like this. I can just rearrange the way that the flow is configured and then make that a 
10 second interval like this and I give it a name get a reading every 10 seconds all right so let's go back to our debug window uh, redeploy this new flow or updated flow clean up previous uh, the, the log uh, previous messages and then click on the button to trigger so here's the first reading and wait for about 10 seconds and here is the second reading and every 10 seconds after that we'll be getting a new reading from the sensor perfect so this is a very simple flow now while we are at it you can see that if we go into the information tab and scroll inside the dht22 flow it's the tab that we're working on right now you can see the nodes that are part of this flow and you can click on each one of those to get the properties of each node one of the really nice features of node red is that it really has built-in support for documentation i'll show you what i mean double click on any one of those nodes like this one for example and then uh, in the edit pane you'll see that there is a description tab Click on that and you'll see that there is a box where you can type in a document that describes this particular note and what it does. So this uses Markdown so you can format your documentation appropriately. It can say something like this. What is this note about? And you can format it as a header. You can say this note triggers the THT22 sensor every 10 seconds. Okay, that's it. And now, of course, this documentation appears here for anyone who wants to use it and learn more about it, but it's also accessible elsewhere. So for example, here you see down the bottom, as you go into the information tab for the flow, you click on the appropriate node and you see down the bottom the documentation appears All right so you can with a bit of care you can document your projects really well as uh, you share them with other people I'm going to show you one more very useful feature of node red which has to do with the ability to import and export flows so let's have a look at my node red installation that is running on my raspberry pi 4 and there i've got this flow so this flow contains again an inject node uh, it's got a function node which contains a bit of javascript and then it's got these three debug nodes i'd like to export this flow from my raspberry pi 4 and then import them into my raspberry pi 2. So the way to do that is to go into the menu up here, top right, and then say export. And that will take the current flow, right? And this is the code that describes the contents of this particular flow, right? So it's just text. I can actually make it format. It's just a JSON document. And I want to copy this to clipboard or you can download it in a text file. But since I'm working within the browsers now, I can just copy to clipboard. Done. Then go into my node red uh, dot local Raspberry Pi and go for import. And I can import from clipboard. Paste. And I would like to create a new flow based on this flow document or, or flow definition. Go for a new flow and import. And now have a look at this tab. It contains my newly imported flow. I can just uh, deploy it and go to the debug window, clean all previous messages out. I'm actually going to only print out um, messages from the current flow right and then trigger the flow and there you go now while we're at this uh, I just want to show what's happening inside a function node so double click on that and you'll see that in here 
we have simple JavaScript. I'm creating a little JSON document, storing it into a local variable. And eventually I have three of those. And then I can send those out as an array to the right side of the function through three outputs. So because I've got an array with three items in it, I need to configure the output to have three outputs. And you can see that I've got one, two, three outputs. And where this works is that the first message, I just move things to the right a little so I can have both the uh, edit pane and uh, the graphical representation of the node visible. So message one will be available through the first output of the node, then message two, from the second, and message three from the third. All right, then those messages are captured by the appropriate debug nodes and then printed out. You can see the first debug node is called msg1 message one and you can see it's print out here after i triggered uh, the flow and so on i'll be talking more about the functions uh, because functions of course are extremely powerful anything you can do with javascript any kind of program you can imagine can go in here to do processing uh, for various inputs and then to create appropriate outputs for further down into the flow but this is very useful and i'm going to talk more about the various variables that are available inside a flow and uh, inside the entire node red environment. So you can actually share data in between uh, flows, not just inside a flow it's itself, but in between multiple flows of the same node red installation. Okay, so with all that said, let's move on to the next lecture where I'll talk about variables and these are global, flow and node variables.